one of a lot of people's favourite castles. I know it's among your favourites. It's in your list of mm -hmm. top ten. Um, and I thought I'd start the list with sort of a big hitter. Yes. And it is, um, well, sort of a, a castle in the true sense where it's really, it was really for defence. Yes. Uh, anyway, it's the Crack de Chevalier, and I've got a picture up here, uh, in um, Syria. Mm -hmm. It's near Homs, n um, not too far from Aleppo, really. Uh, the Crack de Chevalier, the castle of horsemen, or the castle of knights. The castle of the knight, yeah. And, um, and it's, apart from anything else, it's giant. I've never been there, sort it of, It is massive. My sister has been there. Right. Well, yes. Okay, right. Um, the Crack de... Oh, it's funny because... Uh, you're probably pronouncing far better than me because I've always liked the Crack de Chevalier, but Crack de Chevalier. <laughs> Again, I'm horrible with pronunciation. Um, what's really intriguing about this, it's, well, if you were to, because I just talked about the loose definition of castle. If you were to try and give a more technical definition of castle, it would be a fortified medieval residence. Uh, and one of the interesting distinctive features that makes castles distinctive to other kind of fortified uh, buildings is that it is a home, a residence. But the Crack de Chevalier, uh, is really intriguing because it's actually a castle that falls outside of that definition because it was a fortress for a military order more predominantly than an individual's residence. Mm, and so mm. even on the strict definitions of castle, you have to understand that there's, there are exceptions to that. Right, yeah, yes. yeah. So it was garrisoned largely for a long time by the Knights Hospitaller. Yes. Um, it was uh, given by Raymond, Raymond II mm -hmm. to the Knights Hospitaller. And uh, it really is on a fantastic scale. It's sort of, for me and most people, um, just the quintessential crusader castle. Uh, but in a way, it's sort of, well, it's much bigger and better and more well-preserved than any others. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just sort of something to behold, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's huge. And there um, are... I don't mean to cut you off. No, like, please I, do. Can oh, because yeah. there are distinctive features that are just fascinating about this castle. Like, see this. So technically, it's a concentric castle, which is uh, uh, two layers of walls. Uh, sorry, a castle within a castle, and so it's very well fortified and designed in that sense. And then the outermost wall is also functioning as a type of retaining wall, where the internal ground level is on a higher level. Same with the upper level as well. There are so many fascinating things to observe. Um, mm. uh, about this castle, as well as the style and design of Crusader castles generally, um, they're actually more squat, and it's hard to kind of pick that out. It's like, uh, squat, this thing looks huge, and it is huge, but you'll actually find, in terms of the levels on the towers, uh, usually around two, two floors at most, uh, and they might push three, and it's because timber was such a rare resource there that they, uh, to get multiple floors, they basically have to do vaulted ceilings on every single level, right. where a lot of intermediate floors on conventional castles, you, you have a corbel with beams and you can have intermediate timber floors. Very hard to do. And so nearly all right. Crusader castles have very little timber work and they have vaulted ceilings, you know, and as a result, building them high was vastly more challenging. And so they end up being more squat. Right, yeah. Out. So, I mean, it dates from the 12th century. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, after the First Crusade, but quite soon after the First Crusade was built. Uh, one of the things to mention about it is that uh, uh, within a 20 or 30 years of it first being built, there was quite a big earthquake, or a very big earthquake, mm -hmm. and a lot of it collapsed. Mm -hmm. So they sort of had to start again, sort of, not exactly start again. Mm -hmm. But where you can see the, the walls there uh, on, the inner, on the inner portion, well, that's a picture of... Mm -hmm. um, from, from within. And just something um, to observe, yeah. see all the, these arches and everything like mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. you're seeing stone roofing and everything again because timber being a rare resource and so mm -hmm. to get the roofs on them, they're all either archways with vaulted ceilings and, uh, and kind of more squat and, and limited in the height, but yeah. And you can see from that picture how mm -hmm. it sort of overlooks the, the, oh, the, yes. the countryside. Commanding picture. Uh, yeah, com yeah, and obviously that, that will be a thing that comes up again and again mm -hmm. uh, in this. Again, that's just a picture from this. Actually, you can see on the left-hand side there, the sloped wall, or the, the, the glacis, mm -hmm. um, that makes it, it sort of uh, not exactly earthquake-proof, but it makes it a lot more... Mm -hmm. Resistant. Sturdy and resistant. Stable in particular, because that's one of uh, the uh, theories and reasons why castles have this kind of flared base, because by widening out the base, it increases the footprint mm. of the, the structure to rest upon, which evens out the load on the ground underneath it, which makes it more stable. Yeah, yeah, mm. way more stable. So, I mean, it's remarkable, really, that it's, what, 800-odd years old, mm -hmm. and uh, through thick and thin, it has survived. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
I love this castle so much that before the Syrian civil war, me and my mm. older brother were sort of seriously beginning to talk about going to Syria just yes. to, just yeah. to uh, do sort of a mini tour of castles, mm -hmm. crusader castles. And obviously that the Crack de Chevalier would be the highlight. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, again, if it's not sort of clear to people how gigantic it is, it, there was sort of um, just giant vaulted spaces within mm. um, to keep to stable thousands of horses, mm -hmm. actually. Um, and it was supposed to, again, fairly obviously, survive extremely long sieges, potentially, which means you need a few deep wells, extremely deep wells, mm -hmm. um, and be, to be able to um, amass lots and lots and lots of food and mm -hmm. fodder for the horses. Yeah. For, you know, potentially you might be besieged for years, a few years. Possibly. There are sieges that lasted years and longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and your uh, Crack de Chevalier is a monster when it comes to castle sizes. So much so that mm. it kind of throws people off in terms of their understanding because the most prominent and therefore becoming most favoured, and I get that because they're big and grand and amazing, right, are the big castles. So the big castles get all the attention when these giant monster castles are actually more the exception mm. than mm. the norm in standard castle sizes. Um, a lot of castles, and I've had the, the privilege to visit some of them coming to Britain, right, uh, their primary central uh, keep or structure was the size of that one of the outer towers of the Crack de Chevalier. Mm. Um, just look at the size of that tower. That's the size of, or in terms of just the, the kind of footprint of it, of one castle. <laughs> yeah. um, and I really got to uh, notice that when I went to Carnarvon. Um, Carnarvon, and I'm making a video on it, is essentially eight castles in one, or the equivalent, because each tower... Uh, and the type of castle, it's, a, it's what I call a linked um, uh, towered castle where most of its primary buildings are a connection of towers in its outer wall. Um, and uh, you could take any one of those towers and it would be considered the great tower mm -hmm. of an entire castle. Yeah. And I went to I, um, uh, uh, Tritower Castle is literally that, just mm -hmm. one of the, like its primary thing is a single grand tower with a wall around it. Right. And, uh, and I love that one because very representative of castle sizes. Um, and, uh, and again, so uh, uh, the crack there is, is a huge beast and it's great and it's glorious as a result. Yeah, it's, there's not really much else like it. Um, yeah, it's an exception to all sorts of rules. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it, so yeah, if people, you know, aren't familiar with castles particularly and they're seeing mm. these images and they think, oh, this is what, medieval castles or early medieval castles like no no this is a one-off freak <laughs> yeah. this is a, like you called it like a monster yeah yes. it's like um, yes. like the the burj khalifa or something it's like <laughs> yeah not many buildings or there's no real buildings other yeah. than that one that's like that yeah i mean and um, there's only a couple like castles that you could kind of list that are this scale and like malberg is one malberg is one of the castles that has the largest kind of um um uh, it's the largest size in terms of its landmass, though the it depends because some people will say, well, well, is it fair to, because it has a thin wall out of there, but most of the castle is kind of located more in one section. Uh, Kerfili is another, like the, the central castle isn't as big as the Crack de Chevalier, de Chevalier um, but it has an outer kind of wall and motor and system. And so the, the overall ground area mm. of Kerfili is actually quite large as a result. But mm. again, these are the exceptions. Mm. Um, and in terms of just core, structures like if you were to count a castle less so on the land it's occupying and it has a wall around it but the core primary castle structures accumulate like if you were to just even kind of look at it through uh volume of surface area floor area like uh stuff it's, it's easily one of the biggest or if not biggest yeah. so a little bit of history on this before we move on um mm -hmm. obviously uh, uh uh saladin kicked mm -hmm. out most of the crusaders but in the 13th century mm -hmm. um and the Crack de Chevalier was lost by that point. Um, but of course, uh, it fell into Muslim mm. hands and has mm. been used for all sorts of things. Yeah, a lot of the but, murals were defaced, of course, and other things like that. Yeah, they had, yeah. yeah. And in recent times, again, in the Syrian civil war, um, unfortunately, it took a bit of damage. There was some, I don't think they were ISIS, but they were Islamist rebels mm. to the government, mm. used it as um, some sort of garrison or base. <laughs> and the... Um, the Syrian army uh, felt the need to shell it at one point, a couple of times, and there's a picture there of where it was shelled, and 
there was some significant damage, but it wasn't, there's was nowhere near destroyed, not remotely, mm. I mean. That, yeah. But there was a fair bit of damage done to it, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, not that long ago, um, which is, you know, a crying shame. Mm -hmm. um, but there you go. Um, and uh, if and when it becomes possible to go back to Syria and it's sort of completely safe, I would love to go back. Um, the sort of giant Sally Ports there. Everything yes. in the Crater Valley is just on a, a massive scale. Huge, huge. Um, and there, there are like, um, basically like tunnels uh, running underneath. And uh, um, Castle Carrack is, is a bit similar, which is another Crusader castle. And uh, there's like these large arch tunnels underneath where entire markets were set up. Right. Yeah, right. they are just vast, yeah. vast things. And it's just, it's, it's one of those things where it's really, it is on my bucket list. <laughs> I mean, look at the view there. No wonder yeah. it was, because obviously it sits atop a natural uh, mount. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot, not all of them, but a lot of the castles we're going to look at are the same thing. Because the point of it is not only to, it depends what castle and what period mm -hmm. we're talking about. But yes. quite often if it's a real functional castle uh, with a utility, um, not only is it a sort of a defensive position, but it's also mm -hmm. sort of a psychological thing yeah, yeah. to imprint on the landscape. We dominate now. Mm -hmm. We dominate you. We dominate this. See? Mm -hmm. um, and you can see from the view there that yeah. you know, that's exactly well, what's It's going interesting on. how being on a large elevated position is advantageous for the philosophy uh, and conventional wisdom in, in castle design because it's absolutely that. And you're right, a higher up means more difficult it is for siege engines to approach. So it's huge. Like sometimes. There are castles where they're basically impervious to assault by virtue of their position. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, a lot of the Cartha castles, there are a group of castles in, in uh, one of the older borders of France, and then the border moved and their uh, military utility kind of disappeared. But they are on some of the most impressive peaks, and they just look like there would be no way to assault that. It would be impossible just by its position. And then, of course, it's a lookout. The higher up, the larger view you can see, you can like. You know, get an idea or alert to anyone trying to, like, especially a large army of some type. Yeah, yeah. And so multiple um, benefits from just putting it up on, putting it up high. One of the great examples of it being um, sort of impregnable is uh, Ravenna, mm -hmm. where the Romans, uh, a lot of the sort of later Roman emperors would sort of retire to the keep at Ravenna. Mm -hmm. Because any army <laughs> could invade and take the whole of Italy, but yeah. they can't take this keep yeah. at Ravenna. You are safe there, um, mm -hmm. simply because of its uh, of the geography. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, there's just sort of a picture of it in its yeah. in its context. Um, sort of a wonder. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that just to sort of reiterate it again, how old it is, sort of eight nine hundred years, um, and sort of how it's still there, just mm -hmm. by earthquakes and endless wars, really and in what sort of good condition it is, because there's many, many castles that are a lot younger than that, are just ruined. Mm, yeah. And so um, the old idea that they don't build them like that anymore, <laughs> they made it when, it, when it was designed and built, it was, you know, obviously built to last. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.